Hi and welcome to my channel. In this week's video, I will be restoring my E34 M5 emissions pump. So this Denso emissions or smog pump is from my S38, which I'm rebuilding. I don't plan to reuse it. However, I struggled to find much information on this particular pump, so I decided to give it a complete restoration. These were used on the M5s to help with lowering the emissions. What it does is pumping fresh air into the port of the exhaust to aid with combustion after coming out of the engine. So the pulley on the pump is linked with the crankshaft auxiliary pulley and the AC compressor, uh, meaning it will constantly rotate with the engine. However, it's only needed when the engine is actually cold. Um, so behind the pulley, there's an electromagnet, which is controlled by the ECU. And when the mag magnet's powered up, it's able to pull the sprung part, causing the internals to spin up. So next is to remove this rotor here. You think you just push it straight out of there, but this part is actually a press in, and then this is also, so that's pressed in this way, and this is pressed in that way. So then the rotor, behind the rotor, there's a bearing with a circlet. So if you were to push through this, you're gonna snap the casting because it's gonna snap the, uh, the circlet as it comes out. So what I've devised, I've got a piece of metal here, um, probably say six mil thick, I'm going to put that over there and then I've got M5 bolts which I will then drill four holes in that piece of sheet and then I can extract the rotor using the four bolts and just keep nice and even. So I figured out the bolts I had were too small. Um, I quickly just got on a lathe because I didn't have any. So these are M6, I've just turned them down to M5. And just got some M8 bolts all the way around. I'm gonna start now tightening these up evenly and hopefully I can start to pull it out. I've decided to include all this footage. However, the five mil plate was way too thin. As you see, I really struggled with it. And I opted to go with a 10 mil piece, which worked perfectly. Okay, so I'd be lying to say that this hasn't been easy, um, but my first attempt bent like a banana. Added some support, carried on bending. Luckily, I've got some 10 mil steel in my house. And I've just started to tighten it up, and uh, it's time to see what breaks. So what I've done is knit these up. They've probably got over 10 mil of thread now, and now I'm gonna work around these. So after a serious amount of work, as you can see from all the mess, the rotor is finally out and that was in extremely tight. Um, luckily it's going to be quite easy to push in, um, I've got a hydraulic press on the way. So next is to get this circlip out and remove this bearing and then that should be everything completely stripped. So 
there we have the components as stripped as possible so far. I am waiting on a hydraulic press to arrive, so then I can work on the bearings and the pulley, the rears, and then the kind of like the paddle brushes thing. Other than that, um, it was quite smooth. Would have been much easier if I had the right tools, but I'm glad I made them. So now I can move on. Quickly on the lathe, I've just made a piece of aluminium bar because I'm still waiting for my press set to arrive. Fits perfectly in that little gap there. Um, so I'm just going to get that set up and see how it goes. This here is the roller bearing from the other end. Luckily with these, this quad block, this fits pretty well in there. So I'm going to be happy with that. So I'm just going to have that pressed out now. So with the carbon veins uh, there's some J65 needle bearings in these two and uh, so what I need to do is now press them out it's an absolute pain to do I've just done it on one just to make sure it all works and I'll just show you on the hydraulic press Next up is to start with the zinc plating. I have an in-depth video of this of the process, um, which I'll add in now. But I thought I'd just whiz through it just to show how it all works. Here we have the parts after zinc coating. As you can see, they kind of come with a quite dark finish. I'm not going to redo them because it's kind of a bit different, um, but it's not the normal yellowy gold that comes out. Uh, so I won't be doing the main pulley, um, as I've already said. But now these are ready to go to be installed. So I'm just going to finish off the painting and we're ready to go. 
So I do try to keep everything in house. Um, however, with this, I'm looking, going to get it sent off for uh, vapor blasting or aqua blasting. So what I need to do is prepare these surfaces here. Obviously, they're mating surface. So what I'm going to do is use this polydome, which I've used in, in videos before. You simply what they are the small little pellets. You put them into water for a minute, and it's a malleable material which you can cover over bearing surfaces and it sets absolutely rock hard, ready for blasting. Okay, so with the main body back from the vapor blasters, you can see it's in amazing condition. All I need to do now is get this poly dough back off and simply apply a bit of heat, should make it malleable enough to pull off. I'm just gonna do that now. Next up is to get these parts painted. Um, I was going to zinc plate this, but unfortunately my plating kit isn't running as happy as I want it and I can't seem to get it right. So I'm in contact with Classic Plate at the moment, trying to get something sorted for that. Um, so what I'm going to do is give these a spray with U-Pole Satin Black, um, kind of finish off, it's similar to the OEM finish. Now I don't want to really sand this down or sandblast it, obviously it's got a magnet inside of there and this cabling, so I'm going to just mask all this off. I'm going to sand all this down now with some sandpaper get all this ready and then we can start with the U-Pole etch primer and then finish off with the U-Pole satin black. All the parts sanded down with a nice etch finish. Start masking. Um, not a crazy amount to mask on these, I uh, just want to protect the surfaces, the bearing surfaces, um, so I'm going to be covering up this area, covering up here, and then also where the magnet sits in, I'm going to cover that up and then we can get ready for spraying. Here we have all the parts masked up. As you can see, everything's covered over that I need to with that bearing surface around there. And the same again here, with the main surface here. And then what I've done is gone around every single little stud, just take them over, because they're gonna be, uh, keep them kind of the original color. So now we've got the etch primer to start with. Uh, two coats of this, and then usually go two or three coats of the satin black over the top. I'm just going to do this outside so I'm going to film it, but I'll show you the result. Here we have the finished product. It's nice to remove the masking tape, uh, but no, really happy with the finish, especially just from a spray can. It's turned out really nice. No real, uh, no real issues with it at all. Just a little bit of build up on here, uh, but this is kind of an internal piece, so I don't think it's that important. But the main piece, I'm really happy with. There's a few little bits, but they're just kind of fluff on the masking tape, so hopefully that'll all come off. I'm just going to remove the masking tape now. And also this backing plate, unfortunately I seem to have lost all my footage, but I'd used this VHT high temperature wrinkle, wrinkle paint, and as you can see, it looks really good. I'm going to do a video on this separately of how to, how I do it and how it comes out. So uh, I look forward to that. But this is once again ready to go. Now 
All masking now removed. You can see there's a slight bit of overspray on some of these um, mating surfaces. So I'm going to do clean them down, and then what I want to do is lacquer all of these to do with it being steel. Um, it might rust quite quickly, and especially with where it's located right next to the exhaust. I think it's quite important. So I've got some high temperature lacquer that I'll use on all these, and then the pipes fit into there for the air. Here we have the completed product. This is absolutely everything now. It's had some sort of work to it, whether it's vapor honing, new bearings, zinc plating, VHT, painting, all that kind of stuff. Everything is in really good condition now, ready for the build up. These carbon brushes are actually in really good condition. Um, comparing to other people's, there's no really wear on, on them whatsoever, so I'm going to keep them as they are. But yeah, let's get started rebuilding it. I did forget to film this bit. What I did is sprayed some lithium grease around the body of the pump to help the lubrication uh, while the vein's kind of wearing, otherwise it's gonna squeak. quick one for reference um, so with these carbon veins here you've got a thinner and a thicker version the thicker goes on the thinner side of the mounting and then the thinner vein goes on the deeper side with the spacer you see there 
and then the larger, the wider point sits on the outside compared to the thinner point on the inside. Just had to quickly, quickly stop filming there and uh, run into a bit of an issue where with these machine bolts that run into a shank, um, this part here had somehow um, kind of collapsed together, maybe just due to tension. Um, so when I was trying to get them in, they wouldn't line up. So what I've had to do is kind of splay it out just carefully, enough to get these machine bolts in. Everything's up now, so now we can carry on. And here we are, all completed. As you can see, this is the pulley that's attached to the engine. So that will spin around as the engine rotates as it will. And then when this is in the demand, this plug here will send an electromagnet under there. Some force which pulls down this ring here, makes contact on here, and is able to spin the whole thing. Now what I'll try to do is try to set it up so I can spin it, spin it up and just show you how it all works. So let's quickly put the vice into view and so I kind of explain how it works. So this is, this is the pulley that will spin around. And then what you do is, once this engages, let's say here, you'll be able to spin. You won't be able to hear me, but I'll just show you. Thanks for watching. I hope someone out there found this video helpful. I'll link all the parts um, I use in the description.